Perfect. All right, hello and welcome to our webinar on lesson planning and delivery. Uh, this session is specifically for Reveal Math teachers from grades six through 12. Um, and the series builds up on the introductory sessions that we did back in August and September. Um, that was to get you acquainted with the program and the online platform. And we're now going to delve a little deeper into course delivery, uh, curriculum mapping, and take you through a model lesson. Um, the, this particular webinar was requested by quite a few teachers, uh, and so we hope that we are able to answer uh, some of your questions, um, which will be taken towards the end of the session. Um, I will be the moderator for this session today, along with my colleague Nasir al uh, and your trainer for today is DJ West, who is our National Director of Professional Learning, uh, and he's joining us from the US. Just to keep a few points in mind, uh, make sure that your audio is connected uh, while the webinar is on. Uh, turn off any high bandwidth consuming apps. Uh, there will be Q&A towards the end, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and the recording and certificates will be emailed to everyone um, by the end, uh, perhaps within a week or two at max. So that's all from me and over to you, DJ. Great. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Yeah. We've had other people join from... Um, Saudi, welcome everyone. And you know what, thank you for joining today. I'm not going to waste any time with introductions. We're going to jump in right into this. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And then let me get to the right, uh, right place. Oh, should have started this beforehand. And I do want to remind you of just a couple things when we get started. Um, Hamad, can you see that? Can you see my um, slides? Yes, we can. Okay, a um, couple things I just want to remind you of getting started when we're going through this. And by the way, please, if you have questions, put them in the chat. We will try to respond to them. I don't know that we'll be able to get all, to all of them, but I do want you to think about, um, when you think about Reveal Math, a couple of things. And you guys know this, the program comes with print, but please remember that everything is digital. And we're gonna be looking at both, talking about print and digital today. But oftentimes, the best thing for our students is when we have that great blender mixed. Because one of the things about Reveal in 612 is some of the tools that we have built in are digital. And if you don't use some of those digital tools, your students and you are going to be losing some of the design of the program to build conceptual understanding for your students. Okay? Um, another thing, it doesn't matter what device they're using, the digital will work on any device. And if they're using it on their phone or a tablet, it will re-image for that. And I'm talking about the ebook, the interactive book. I'm talking about all of those other resources that we'll look at today. And then finally, please do not forget, there is a free app that works with the interactive ebook. It's called the McGraw-Hill Read Anywhere app. You can download it off Google Play or the App Store on the iOS for Apple. And what you're seeing on the screen actually is a snapshot I did out of my Reveal Math Interactive Book that builds that out. The other thing that's available on the interactive book are the um, personalized learning pieces that you can assign out to your students. It's a supplemental resource. You'll find it at the module level. But then we'll, and we'll take a look at where you find that resource to Okay. And then some of your students, if they're not um, automatically, if they're not English as a first language students, we know often the language jumps in there. There are some language options for you, like the multilingual glossary. But one of the things I do want you to remember, if a student could use the support, the interactive book does work with Google Translate. I know it's not perfect, but it's getting better and better. And if that's a useful piece for them, just have them download the extension, and then you do need to open the interactive ebook up in a new tab in order to use that. So just be aware that it does, and we'll take a look. So we're looking specifically today at grades six through 12. We're looking at course one, two, and three, our accelerated program, algebra one, geometry, and algebra two. Um, my friend that teaches calculus, calculus is not on the same platform or same design. So that's a program that's a little bit different. Now, when we go into one of the things I want you to remember, first of all, when you start to plan your lessons, the program is designed on a module lesson format. 
There aren't units, there aren't chapters, a module is similar to what we would call a chapter, and it's going to go into those lessons. Now, I would encourage you to think about when you get into the actual lessons, you'll notice here some have one explore activity, some have multiple explore activities. Those explore activities are something I'm gonna focus on today. But we did a couple things at the module level that I really want to encourage you to think about. Now we're looking at a print student book. It doesn't matter if you're print, digital, uh, whichever format that you're in, please don't skip a couple things in the module. And what am I meaning about that? You know, when we introduce the module, we're going to uh, introduce a couple of things. Number one, there's always going to be an essential question. And really research has shown that the essential question actually grounds the learning for a student in mathematics. Sometimes we look at it, especially I think at the high school level, and we think, oh, I don't need to do that. I just need to get back in the math. But you notice here in module four, this is eighth grade course three, what can a function tell you about the relationship that it represents? And really what we're wanting is at the end of the module, the student to be able to verbally express that in appropriate mathematical language. And if they can do that without just memorization that you gave it to them, we're gonna see the fact that the students have started gaining some conceptual understanding and mathematical acumen around that essential question. You're gonna see a couple other things that tie into here. So that's that essential question. The other thing about the essential question at the end of the module, there is an, always an opportunity for students to reflect on what they've learned. It goes along well with the module assessment. Again, what we're talking about, can they express that in mathematical terminology. Now, um, if I go into this from a teacher, couple important facets around your planning, whether you're in block or regular schedule, you're gonna see my module goals. Again, if you want a high level check for whether students have actually walked away with what they need to in this lesson, you're gonna see these three overarching ones. They can solve a linear equation in one variable, they can solve proportions, they can use formulas to solve real world problems. And if you notice those three, that's a real high level check. Did they walk away with what they need to in this lesson? We're always gonna lay out for you these things. What's the focus? What's the domain? What are the standards for mathematical practice? And are there specific standards for mathematical practice? So those mathematical practice standards, you're gonna notice typically at a module level, we're dealing with all eight of them. I've got my vertical alignment, this actually is very important for you to be able to look at previously, what have they done? What are they doing now? What will they be doing next in order to set the next teacher up for success? And then under rigor, what are they doing rigor-wise with conceptual understanding, fluency, and application? But the most important part of this page for you is the pacing. One thing I want to point out in Reveal Math, every lesson is not one day. And when I say a day, you're going to notice on the chart down at the bottom, this module actually has seven lessons. There's also a put it all together, a module review and a module assessment. Some lessons are one 45 to 55 minute class period. If you're on block, you're gonna see we break it down a little bit differently for you to help you actually plan that way. But you're going to see on this one, some lessons are two days. You will actually see that some lessons are three days. That's essential in your planning that you look at that and determine how many days should I appropriately use on this lesson in order to cover it? And the reason that we did this, we wanted you to be able to go into depth in those lessons when you're planning them, okay? That's why you're gonna see us pull that out with both the uh, focus, coherence, and rigor. You'll also notice on this one, be sure to cover. Notice this one? In order to completely cover the standard, make sure you cover linear growth patterns because it's going to be essential for their understanding when they go through. We're just gonna pull out certain things that we really feel are essential, and then you're gonna see that pacing guide that goes along with this. Now, from your student's perspective, again, I'm gonna encourage you to do this at the module level. There is, at the beginning of every module, this what will you learn? And this is all about students starting to develop some ownership over their learning pathway in mathematics. So you're gonna see what we've done. 
we pulled out the basic topics they're going to cover for this module. There's a before and after reflection. Do I know this? Have I heard of it? Or I don't know this. I haven't even heard of it. Okay. Graphing linear equations by using a table. Students just go in and they check off where they are in each of these topics. Again, it's an ownership thing for the students to see what they feel or where they feel they are in the math. And then when you do that reflection, I would encourage you to come back and highlight this piece as you're working through it. Now, there are a couple things we built in the unit that I specifically want to call out to do okay, at the unit opening. One, every unit begins with an IGNITE activity. These IGNITE activities were written by Dr. Raj Shaw. And really what there is about is developing student curiosity. You know what, as math teachers, we have a challenge in front of us that almost every other subject area does not have. And that is the fact that many of our students walking into our room have an attitude about mathematics, that mathematics is difficult. Mathematics doesn't relate to my life. I'm never going to use mathematics. And while you and I as math teachers love math, many of our students are carrying that piece with them. Why do they have that? I think they have it for three reasons. Number one, many of our primary level teachers never focused in mathematics. They were reading specialists and they have a little bit of math phobia. Our students, even though it's not expressed, pick up that fear of math. I think especially our um, female students actually have that background where um, boys are good at math, girls are not good at math. And I think teachers perpetuate that, not intentionally, but that's number one. Number two, because we love math, we expect our students to love math. And often we feel it's their responsibility just to step up and learn it. And so we don't spend time creating curiosity. And that's a generalization. And then number three, often for our students, it's never connected to real world application. One of the things Dr. Shaw did with this is created an opportunity for students to look at an idea. It's a problem, but it's not necessarily a solvable problem. And here's what I mean by that. In this one, what's in your piggy bank? Well, it's saving to buy a new scooter. Each day she saves her quarters in a jar. The total number of quarters in the jar each day is shown. Study the pattern. One, three, five, seven. Uh, what do I notice about this pattern? Now, you notice this. It didn't tell me specifically to do anything with the pattern. What do you notice? What do you wonder? What questions can you ask about this pattern? Let me show you another example. This is one that I really like. Chocolate milk mixture, uh, mixtures. Hector and his sister Luciana each made a glass of chocolate milk. Hector mixed a greater amount of cocoa powder in his glass than Luciana did. Luciana claims her milk has a stronger chocolate taste. What do you notice? What questions can you ask? And again, I just want to throw this out there. Not everyone does not have an answer, but the majority of these are open-ended. So here, just a heads up, guys. Students cannot really solve this. Why? Because there are certain things that the students would need to know in order to come to a solution. The whole about idea about this problem is what would I need to know? What kind of strategy could I use? So we start out with this. What do you notice about this? Well, I notice that Hector has more, more milk in his glass. And actually, his is almost full, where hers is less than half full. What else do I notice? They don't tell me how much powder each person put in. So I don't even have an idea of what the exact ratio is. What questions could I ask about this? Okay, how, much, how exactly how much milk did you pour in here in each class? You know, that kind of thing. Talk about it, share your observations. Students start to get start be able to express it. The other thing I want you to notice with this, every single student can notice and wonder things. Every student in your class can get involved. So first I let them take a stab, then I do some small group work around this, then I come back whole group. Now, this is the whole activity. In fact, I pulled it out even out of an extension that goes along with it. And then for you, the teacher, you're going to have the complete background in order to work through this type of activity. Because many of us aren't used to doing open-ended pieces like this. 
How do I encourage productive struggle? If students are having non-productive struggle, what are some of the leading questions that I can use to help guide them in order so that their discussion becomes productive? The whole idea about this is taking an idea, they're gonna deal with it in this module and developing it out. So you have that full piece to support you. And I'm just gonna challenge you guys, try it. It's something that builds curiosity in our students and actually allows every single student to get engaged. Many of you know this also, we might, might look at this and say, well, this is fluff. Every module starts out with a real world video. Now, I'm not playing the audio with this one, but what I want you to know is in each of these, there are two to three different scenarios that connect the major math to what we're getting ready to look at. Now this goes to our linear equation ones, looking at slope. And so we're gonna pull in one on airplanes, we're gonna pull one on routers in a building and what the distance does to it. And there are a whole variety of these that can be used with the program. Now, I'm gonna stop there just for a second because really what I'm addressing is getting ready for the module. And what I wanna do before I go into a lesson and planning for that lesson is actually go into the digital. And let me go back to my dashboard. Let me close this out. Okay. I'm on my grade level dashboard. Again, for all of you, whether you're teaching sixth grade course one or you're teaching all the way through algebra two, this dashboard is going to look the same. And I would say, whether you're planning for the module or for the lesson, a couple of the tools that are built in digitally one is your teacher edition. That ought to be one of the two tools that you use regularly when you're planning for your lessons. And you can use that in print or digitally. And when I say print or digital, I gotta move my control panels here. Sorry guys, let me move them down there. Um, I'm gonna click this open. That teacher edition is online. So you're gonna see right here, I already, already opened it to module four. A Couple things you ought to know about this. If you wanna zoom in, this button right here will switch you over to single page view. You can then zoom in on that page and you're gonna see everything we were talking about with my pacing. If I go over another page, my formative assessment probe that we're gonna to touch on in a minute is in here. My Ignite activity, my essential questions, my background on this. So I really ought to take a look at the ideas that are built in here. That's one resource I ought to use. The second resource is the digital materials that are here. And if I go back to my dashboard, I'm gonna click into module four. Please remember if you haven't used the digital a lot, all of the digital resources are on three levels. If I click back up here and scroll up, the first thing you're gonna see are your program level resources. That's my course pacing, my correlations, my professional development that we built in here, a whole series of realistic pieces that are really supportive of what you're doing in class. Secondly is the module level, like we're looking at module four today, and then underneath that are my specific lesson level resources. So everything we just talked about, that Ignite activity, that module level material, I'm gonna find at this module level. Now, when I'm in here, realize that you can scroll down. If I wanted to include the Ignite activity in my presentation, I could do that. But if I scroll up, and let me collapse all of these first, we've kind of put everything in these virtual file folders. So at the module level, you're gonna see launch, review and assess, and additional resources. Now, if I click open my launch, and this is about planning for the, the module. Here, I'm gonna see a family letter I could send home. So my parents know what's going on. It has some activities in it, that kind of thing. Here's my Ignite activity that we just looked at. And here's my teacher notes that go along with this. You're gonna notice both of these are in Word. So if you wanted to alter this a little bit, you perfectly have the freedom to do that. What about my launch the module video? It's right here. That's the one we were just looking at with the airplanes and the router problem. And the other thing I wanna to mention to you is the module pretest. Now there is a course diagnostic for course one, two, and three. 
But every module has a pretest that, again, I'm going to encourage you to use. It lets you look at what precursor skills your students may be lacking that are needed specifically for this module. So it's a great way to look at your students and to say, hmm, maybe I need to spend a little bit of time before we launch into this on some of the topics that are involved. So that's under my launch. That's all those things that we talked about are built in right here for you. You can use them in a presentation. You're gonna notice right here, it says launch. If I want the Ignite activity in here to talk to them about it, I can click that. It will put it right in my presentation and I can use that to help display for my students. But let's scroll down and see what else is in here. I'm gonna click this open. I'm gonna see my formative assessment probe. Now we'll talk about that in just a minute. It doesn't happen at the beginning of the module. It's inside the module at point of use. I've got some personal tutors that are built in here that I could use with my students. I've got my module review, my dynamic module practice. That's a module level resource they can use before assessment that has algorithmic questions. I've got my e-solutions, which has solutions to all of the module, um, all of the lesson practice. I've got my module, my performance task, and then down below, this is one of the places I can find my assessments for the module. I got some differentiated resources down below for assessments, and then I'm gonna click open additional resources. And this is where we find those Learn Smart or the personalized learning pieces. This is a great review for your students by mathematical domain. It's adaptive. Students can use it once you assign it on their own. But again, a module level resource that's gonna focus on the domain that this topic is inside of the five domains, okay? Now, all of those resources are there. The other thing to remember about this, if you want to digitally, you can assign these resources out. I can click right here. It brings up an assignment form. You can actually then assign it out to all of your students or some of your students, okay? Now, so really what we talked about at the module level is using three specific things at the beginning of that module. One is the Ignite activity, one is the module pretest, and then one is using that video to set a context for real world use. It's all about developing curiosity around the lesson, okay? That's one place we can start. Now, I'm gonna stop just for a second. Okay, good, I've got one question that came up in the Q&A. Where can I find this page in the online resources? Um, if it was the teacher edition, it was opening that TE up and then simply going to your TE. And by the way, when you're in your teacher edition or your interactive student edition, your table of contents is right here. You have everything in the book. What, regardless of what module you wanna go into, it's right here in that teacher edition, okay? Same thing with the student edition. If I click over to my interactive student edition right here, again, my table of contents, but if you scroll down, then you're gonna find your modules, okay? So we're in module four, we're in modules linear relationships. That takes me to that module opening page. And you're going to notice the reason we call this an interactive student book is anywhere they can write in the text with a pen, paper pencil, they can respond digitally. So that precursor, what do I know about these things? Finding and interpreting the slope of a proportional relationship. And I've heard of that one, but I don't really know what it is, okay? Graphing proportional relationships. Yep, don't know that one. Okay, comparing them, okay, uh, I think I know this. Now, why they would know it if they didn't know the precursor one, but I'm just kind of highlighting for you. But anything they're able to do here, they're able to actually work on in the interactive student book. So that's the module level. Let's jump over to the lesson level, which is what you're doing every day, okay? I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint just for a minute and let's highlight some things, um, sorry right there in the lesson, okay. Now, the formative assessment probe I mentioned, I'm not gonna spend time here. You will find it at the module level, but again, just remember, this is a formative assessment that happens after the lesson that makes the most sense. So sometime could be near the beginning, 
sometimes maybe near the end of the module. You have a problem that actually lays out like this one. We've got four graphs. If I look at this absolute value equation, does any of these graphs represent these equation or do I need more information? So they pick a choice and then the major part of this, they explain that choice. So you'll find one of these in each module. And then in the TE, we saw this a minute ago, you're always going to have this analyze the probe, collect and assess the student responses. And then what you're gonna see in that collect and assess, they will actually give you, if a student chose this answer, they may be thinking these things. They may have these misconceptions. And then most importantly, there's always a take action piece that goes along with this. Okay. Helps you know what to do with your students if they're struggling with this idea, okay? Let me jump ahead. We'll go into the lesson. The lesson has four parts. Launch, explore and develop, reflect and practice, assess and differentiate. Now, when you're planning for the lesson, you're gonna have all of that material in your teacher edition. And I want you to notice right here in your TE, it's going to lay it out right by those four parts. The lesson goal, now let's launch the lesson with the warm up and possibly the launch. Let's explore and develop. And what are we going to do when we explore and develop? We're going to look at two major topics. We're going to look at rate of change of a linear function, finding rate, comparing rates, constant rate, rate of change. We're going to do an investigation. It's called Explore. Please do not skip the Explore activities. And then we're going to develop the idea of slope of a line, positive, negative, horizontal, vertical, finding coordinates and using slope. That's why sometimes the lessons are more than one day. Now, these are fairly straightforward. You're then going to find your Reflect and Practice. Okay, so here's the beginning part. And then after the Reflect and Practice, you're going to find your differentiation suggestions. There's a remediation for my approaching level, and there's an extension activity for my students. But again, I think you can see why we're talking about using this as your primary source of doing it, whether you use it print or digital, okay? Now, you're going to notice this right here. If I go back over to my online um, teacher, right here, I'm going to go back to my teacher edition. And then I'm going to go into my table of contents. We're in module two. Uh, actually, we're in module four. And I want to go to lesson two, slope of line. And again, I'm going to go to single. Um, oh, I was on single page. I want to go to single page view. Let me back up a page. Okay, here's that lesson. All of that information we just looked at, whether you're in print or whether you're digital. And then when I forward ahead, what I'm going to see is each of the things available for that part of the lesson. So launch, here's the warm up. The warm up works with procedural fluency. It looks at prerequisite skills that are needed for this lesson. That's where that diagnostic can help you. How many students are struggling with this idea and then I can launch the lesson. Now, before I leave this part right here, and we're gonna look at the warm up more in detail, but if I've given that module diagnostic, and I know I have some students that are struggling with a precursor skill that's needed in these lessons, I wanna take you to this lesson digitally. So let's go to lesson two. Some of you may not realize this. So it's not a core part of my teaching. But if I have students that are struggling with the precursor idea, if, and let me collapse all of these just so we are not looking at everything in the lesson. But if I go down to the additional resources and open this, and I scroll down, okay, I'm gonna stop right here just for a second. You're gonna see two pieces called review. You're gonna see a review learn, and you're gonna see a review example. These deal with that precursor idea from that, that's needed for this lesson. It's not the on-level content. It's the prerequisite skill. So you, again, can assign these out to specific students, or 
you can use these in class if they struggle, but that's why I give the diagnostic. If they're struggling with that idea, you can use these review pieces with them, whole group, small group, or individually with your students. But what is more frustrating for a student than starting a lesson, missing the things you need to be able to do the on-grade level content? Every lesson, every lesson under additional resources will have the review learn and the review example. Just in time remediation, one of the things your students need. Not a core part of this day's lesson, but to help you support those students while they're working through it. So I actually have that background in my TE to support me. And then for the warm up of the lesson, you have two different pieces you can use. The warm up is about the prerequisite skills. You can use this as a bell ringer if you want. And then there is always a launch to the lesson. Now, in this launch, it's about a roller coaster. That roller coaster, and we're dealing with slope. You actually have a video that's built into it. You have a decision to make. Do I want to use one of these, both of these, or do I want to just jump into the lesson? I'm going to encourage you. I would, I would set the time in my lesson. I would just use this as a quick bell ringer. I wouldn't spend a lot of time on it unless so many of my students don't understand what's happening right here because you're gonna to need to use this and be able to do this in using slow. And then secondly, I would go ahead and do the launch really quickly. Because often, especially at six, seven, and eight, this launch is gonna be your exit ticket out the door. When I go down here, that video is gonna actually take them. It gives them a real world context for what we're talking about with slope again to go along with that module video. But that's gonna start the lesson. You're really just not trying to solve the math yet. You're wanting to do, do it, develop that curiosity. And then we go in to reveal the understanding. So we've launched the lesson now. We're going into explore and develop. And this is going to happen in a couple different ways. Some will start with a learn. Some will start with an explore. Just depends on when we're introducing the new concepts and when we want students playing with them. You need to look at your TE in your lesson to take a look at that. You are going to see prompts in that lesson to think about it and to talk about it. Why are we doing that? Because the more students are actually using the language of math and expressing themselves verbally, the better they're going to do in that lesson, the more they cement the understanding. So the way that we work it in the program, and this is 612, we stick out a learn, we introduce a little bit of new or bring back some prior learning. This one learned rate of change of a linear equation. Then we're gonna go into an example. Now, if, in, if I'm in the interactive student book, and let's go there for a minute. I'm in my interactive student book. Let's go over to lesson two. Here we go. Okay, lesson two. What can I do? What am I trying to do in this lesson? I can identify the slope of the line and interpret it as a rate of change within the context of the problem. Here's vocabulary. They should have seen this previously. Um, this one goes right into an explore activity. So I think I was in lesson one before. It started with learn. This one starts with an explore activity. Okay. This is an online activity. Use Sketchpad to explore how to send the point. Then we're going to go into a learn. Learn is the rise over the run. But you notice we're gonna do this after we've done the web sketch. This is why I'm gonna tell you do this first because you actually wanna use that web sketch. Now, where do I find the web sketch? Right in module four, lesson two, when I go to explore, very first thing I'm gonna see is my explore activity. Now there's background in your teacher edition about using that explore. So if I scroll down, if, probably if I go over a page, here's my explore, here's the objective, ideas for using this, summary of the activity that's built in here, inquiry questions that you can use to go along with this. So that part's gonna be in there, but if I'm in my interactive um, lesson, you'll notice I can use this two ways, and this is important, guys. One, I could use it whole group, I could do it small group or I could do it independently. My personal belief, this is best used in small group. 
But if that's a problem, I can use it whole group. I'm gonna click this open and give you an example of this one if you haven't used these. So I'm gonna go whole screen with this. And I'm gonna go all the way back. Somebody's been in this one and already started it. I'm gonna go back to number one. Okay, I'm in as a teacher, so my teaching notes are right here. Okay, introduce it. You're gonna use a web sketch to explore the problem. Okay, let's go to page two. It's gonna load the sketch, so how to use it. If I click right here, it's gonna tell me exactly what to do to use that sketch. And in this one, think about it. Do you think this point down below will eventually reach the target? Continue to press, take a step to, to test your hypothesis. So if it's gonna go up one vertically and one horizontally, uh, um, up one vertically and across one horizontally each step, Am I going to reach that target? Now, initially, it would have been at start. And if I take a step, I can see if my hypothesis is going to work out. Okay, in this one, I actually reached it. So let's go ahead and see what's going to happen in this. Now, the idea behind this, students are actually playing with rise over run before we actually formulate the formula. It gives them some conceptual Velcro to attach this lesson to. Notice this one, think about how many paths could actually reach the target. So I'm gonna reset this activity. Why am I resetting it? Because I've used this before. It remembers what I've done and same for your students. So in this one, I started out with one one, I'm still at 0.6 and six. What other values could I put in here that would reach this? Well, two two would, what about two three? I'm gonna take a step on this one. And I can already tell that one's not gonna work. So let me reset it. What if I did six and six? And let's try this one. And I hope you see what I'm getting at. By students playing with this, they get to realize there's different ways to do it. There's different ratios that match the same thing. As they continue through this activity, they're gonna start actually working with some different point values to be able to do this. So they can, um, if I reset this activity, I can hide the line, I can look at the point, and it's gonna ask me to actually move and set different points up and then look at how I get to those. So as they go through the explore activity, they're working on these ideas to develop some conceptual formatting. And then in my interactive book, right here for my student, I'm gonna to go to that explore into the learn where you as the teacher are now guiding or formalizing. That's the word I like to use. You're formalizing now what they just did. We played around with all these values and getting them by going horizontal, vertical. So what are these things? The vertical changes rise, the horizontal changes. That ratio creates a slope. And they were able to use a line to look at that. So when I go down in, there are different kinds of slope. There's positive, negative, and I can learn slope from a variety of different ways. I can do it from a graph. So what's the rise of a run? And just remember, they really interact with this. And when I get through my learn, what I'm gonna go into is a series of examples. These examples are gonna step-by-step step, as they go through, build out the concepts that are within this, this lesson. Now, I'm gonna go back again to my course. I told you, you could do this explore activity two ways, actually three. Individually, you could actually do some flipped learning if you want, have the students do the explore before they come to class. Number two, you could do it small group, groups of two or three where they're working on this together. And then number three, you could do it whole group if you need to, where you're actually having students work through it. Now, if you whole, do it whole group, I wanna show you something that you might not find otherwise. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom of that lesson, to that segment called additional resources, you're gonna notice there's an explore recording sheet. This is a printable Word doc that was created for students to be able to follow along the activity if you're doing it whole group. So the one we just did, developing concepts of slope, here's a recording sheet for it. 
I can print this out. My students can have it. They can still be developing that conceptual understanding even while the activity is being done on the board. Now you remember, if I look at the resources in this lesson, or if I went through my TE, I'm gonna see this lesson starts out after I do my launch with an explore that we just looked at. It's gonna go into learn about the slope, what is slope, and how do I find slope from a graph? Then I'm gonna have a couple different examples. Finding slope from a graph, finding slope from a graph. For every example, you have an extra example that goes along with it. This is the one in the student book, this is not. And a couple things about these examples when you're planning your lesson. This example, when you see the graph, if you assign it digitally, actually has a quick check at the end. Now I'm gonna click this one open. Just remember this example is in the student book. I'm gonna go whole screen with this one. Let this load just for a second. There we go, okay. I'm in it as a teacher, so I have my teacher notes that go along with it. Students would not have that, but the graph shows the cost of muffins at a bake sale. Think about it, to travel only 2.4 to 3.6. What's the vertical rise, okay? We're doing it from a graph, all right? Let's go to my next step. Choose any two points on this line so that it's giving them that guided response, okay? Any two points on this line, calculate the slope, you know, we find the ratio of rise over run. So, now this one's already been done. Normally that answer wouldn't be here, but I could look at rise and I can look at run. If I go to the next step, see what, see what I'm pointing out, these examples become interactive for students. How can you tell it's positive? And when I get to the last page, this is what I mean by a check. There's one, two, or three questions about this particular idea that students can do that collect data for you. This one, it's just one problem. If I start this assignment, you're gonna see the problem comes up for the student, but if you assign this out, you actually get the data. Find the slope of the line, and they can actually use their math editor to go in, do the equation and find the slope of the line. They can also use the handwriting technology piece to do this if they're on a tablet or on a um, device that allows them to write on it, and it will actually translate that into script, okay? That's that example. Remember, that example's in the book, and then I have an extra. But let me run you through this real quick. I have an explore, we do a short learn about two concepts and then work through a couple examples. Remember, these examples are gradual release. I then go to my learn, I have another example. I have a learn on using slope formula. So slope from a graph, slope from a table, slope from a formula. I've got my example number four. I then have a second explore activity. I do my learn, I've got a couple examples that go along with this. And then I end up with an apply problem. Now I'm gonna switch back over to my PowerPoint just for a second. So we started out in this lesson with a learn, and then we went into an, an explore. So this one, the order was a little bit different. Um, if I go ahead, there are many ways to do that different example. And then we talked about the use of those examples in the extras but we wrap it up with that apply section. Now, every one of these um, examples in your teacher edition, go back online just for a second and go here. As I work through here, it's gonna have my background on every single part with the examples, giving me ideas how to support my students as we work through the math. And I'm gonna end that up with an application problem. And I'm just gonna click ahead a little bit Now, do I have to use all the examples? Absolutely not, okay? If they get it on the first example, don't use the second one, okay? Or maybe you look and say, thinking about my students, they need the second one. Now, you notice the number of pages I'm clicking through in the um, TE. That's simply because of the detail that we give you. And then when I come to that application problem, it's let's now use that idea in a real world setting, okay? Now, I'm gonna stop there. I've got several things that have come up in the chat. 
Um, okay, some of this was actually technical. Okay. Now let me talk about wrapping it up then, okay? Click back over. So if you think about this lesson, we did the launch with the warm up and the launch. We went into the explore and develop, and develop where we're using those explore activities, the learns and the examples. We ended up with the apply. We're now gonna come to reflect and practice. And in that practice, a couple of things that we've done in the program for your planning. If you look at this, you're gonna notice those checks. Now in middle school, six course one, two, three and accelerated, they're built into the examples. In secondary or algebra one, geometry and algebra two, they're actually called checks. And you'll see those checks move out of sunlight. Sun's coming up here, it's morning for me. As you'll see the checks, those are gonna help you determine what a student is ready to do. So you have the practice in the book, you're gonna have plenty of problems to work through. Notice I've kind of jumped some pages here, but it goes from number one all the way down to 68. You're never gonna use all of those. A variety of types of questions. Um, you can do it online and we're actually gonna highlight for you the DOK levels so you can develop the assignments. If you do the um, assessments, you're gonna have some guidance then as to what to use the students. So think about this. I've got all these print options, okay? They can do all these problems if you wanted them to, or you could look manually and say, you know what, these students, I wanna give them these, they're struggling a little bit. These, I'm gonna go a little bit more of the DOK, and I wanna throw in some of those DOK level three. But what we've done for you already is digitally, we've kind of created a differentiated set of practice. Now, here's what I want you to notice. I'll show you this in just a second. If we go online into the assessment bank and we go to practice, you're gonna see that dynamic module practice we already talked about. It's for the whole module, algorithm-based questions. But you're also gonna see for the lesson, these different banks. Notice there's six of them. Or are there seven? Am I missing one because your line's coming in? Nope, there's six of them. The one that says practice is a set of practice that comes directly out of the book, you know? Regular on level has some of all the DOK levels. Um, we limit it to 40 problems because we don't wanna give the students all 68 or 69 problems in the book, whatever it is for that lesson. So it's gonna be 40 of them, but it's the exact practice that's out of the book. Secondly, we've divided that. If you have some students that really are struggling and really need work on procedural fluency, that's what the reinforced practice is about. Let's support those students. That's for my approaching level students. If I have students that are pretty successful and I want to challenge, I could assign out the reason and apply. Those are those more of the higher order thinking in this set than in the reinforce. I've got a spiral review set down here. And if you need more practice than that, we actually have an extra practice bank that is not in the book. That's set aside for you. And finally, when you see this practice item bank here, that practice item bank is all of the questions in all of these other banks. The spiral review, the extra practice, the regular practice, the reason to apply and the reinforce. All of it's in this. So if you wanted to create your own, you could do that from the practice item bank. Now I'm gonna go back online for a minute. Well, let me go ahead just one second before I do that. You can do that digitally in the module practice, that dynamic module practice, they're gonna have multiple attempts and it will keep changing the problem on it. But if you think about the assessment tools that we have, at the module level, the Ignite, the Math Probe, and the Diagnostic, that pre-check. In the lesson, the warm up, the quick checks, the exit ticket, and the data. That's where I wanna go right now. At the module level, the dynamic module practice, the performance assessment, and the summative assessment. So I'm gonna click back over to the online for a second. And I'm gonna go back to my dashboard or to my lesson. I'm gonna go from here to, by the way, so let me scroll down. Okay, so we have launch. Let me collapse my blades again. 
I have my launch, which is my warm up, my launch, my explore and develop, which is three things. It's my explore activities, my learns, and my um, examples. My reflect and practice, if I click this open, you're going to find my different levels of practice, okay? Here's my extra practice. Here's my regular practice. Again, regular practice, it's digital and print. The digital is going to be that data collecting version with the 40 problem. We've got some personal tutors here and there's my spiral review down below, all right? But I can also click over here and go to assessment. And you're gonna see for every module, two banks, a test bank and a practice bank. If we go to our module and click open the practice bank, you're gonna see all of that practice that we talked about. You're gonna see each lesson. And for each lesson, here's my dynamic module practice, my extra practice, my regular practice, my reason apply, my reinforce, my spiral review, okay? And then up at the top, you're gonna to see the practice item bank. And just remember the item bank are all of the questions within every one of the other one of these, okay? You can assign it out directly like it is here. Just click on assign, or you can go in and edit, or you can create your own using this practice item bank. Now, if I do the assessment, what do I do then? And that's the thing, if there's no step after it, then what do I do? So let me go back here, show you this just briefly. There's a couple things that you can do with this. Again, you've got different uh, versions of the module assessment as well, approaching on level. Um, you're gonna see all that in the banks, okay? That are available for you to use with it. And you get the reporting that goes along with it. I'm gonna flip ahead just a few slides and highlight some of the things you can do. We now come to assess and differentiate that practice as part of that assessment. So if they're missing the precursor ideas, remember I already showed you these review, the review learn and the review example. If I give the practice and they're struggling, what do I do? Well, you're gonna find several different things built in, okay? Extra support and then extension opportunities. So let's go back online and let's go back to the lesson we were in. I'm gonna to go to course. And if I go down, I'm gonna close up Reflect and Practice. I'm gonna go down to my additional resources. When I open this up, you're gonna see several things. Here's my Explorer recording sheets if I use that. My language development handbook for this lesson. By the way, it's a great support for all our students. I'm gonna see my review learn and my review example. And then if I scroll down a little bit more, I'm gonna see an extension activity, but also in this lesson, I have a take another look. If I click that take another look and I enlarge this, this is about a 15 minute mini lesson on the topic you just covered. Some will have one, some will have two, depending on how the topics that we cover. You can assign these out to support your students that didn't capture the idea you were working on in that lesson. It's gonna start out with a short tutorial. It's gonna then go into what we call learn and apply, where we're gonna introduce it with the video. Now we're gonna go into the learning pieces. This also works great for students who were absent. And I can work my way through this Students are actually answering, they're working, they're doing things in the learn and apply. They're gonna go through multiple steps of that. And then when I get to the end of this lesson, there's gonna be a short assessment piece that actually lets you see how did they do in recapturing this. So I want you to think about this with me. We've gotta wrap this up. We started out with the module, the Ignite activity, the you know student self-assessment. What do I know, what do I don't know? the example and the pre-diagnostic. Somewhere in the unit, we're gonna have that formative assessment pro. I'm gonna use my TE and my online resources to help me plan for this. Then when we get into the lesson, we have that four-part lesson plan, okay? Let me back up just a minute, right here. Launch, where I have the choice of using the warm-up and the launch or both, 
Explore and develop through using the explore activities. Do not skip those. That sets the framework for the students to understand. I then go into my learns. From the learns, I go into my examples. Remember, you have an extra example that you could use to have a fresh one. Then I go into my application. And finally, I wrap up with um, my, my apply problem. Now, I then go into my practice and reflect. And I wrap up with the assess and differentiate. Okay. The assessments can be the practice. They can be those quick checks I've already used, but then it shows me how to help my students. And you're going to see support in your teacher edition. I'm going to kind of wrap up with this. Let me go back to my TE for a minute. Um, I'm actually going to see some support when they take the checks and like the exit ticket right here that give me an idea. If they're not doing well, what are some of the things I ought to use with them? So if they scored above 90, Maybe I want to give them these exercises and use the extension. If on the exit ticket they scored 66, then maybe I want to assign these problems and the remediation resources of the personal tutor. Or if they scored below this, then I want to use those review resources and maybe that take another look piece to support them. But it's going to help you know what to use exactly with those students. Now I'm going to stop there for a minute. I'm going to check. Um, Okay, we've got some questions on the okay, small group training. Um, you know what? It depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to do every lesson in one day, it could be overwhelming. That's why some days that have more in-depth concepts are going to allow you to do it. And just remember you have freedom to do pieces. That like you don't have to use every example. Use only the ones that you need to use, and that will actually support the students. Um, we're going to stop there, guys, because we're at time. And then Hamad, I'm going to go ahead and let you wrap up with the things that you need to do, and then I'm, I'm going to drop right now for that other presentation. Yep, sure, no problem, DJ. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so that would be the end of it. Um, as I mentioned in the chat, we will be sending out the certificates and the recording uh, within the next week. Um, and any feedback you may have, there will be a uh, feedback form there as well that you can fill out and let us know what you would like to see in the next webinars uh, and if uh, the one that we delivered today was beneficial to you or not. Um, that would be the end of it. And you can reply to the same email address that um, was in the emails that you received for the for for this webinar. So that would be it. Um, have a great evening, everyone, and we'll see you again in the next one. Thank you.